What's up, ladies and gentlemen? <clears throat> what is good? We are here tonight to discuss the Nick Ricada search warrant. And I'm just going to go ahead and put this out there. Um, there is some disturbing information in this warrant. So if that bothers you, if things like child neglect, child abuse, um, I mean, that should bother everybody. But what I mean is if that if that affects you in a way to where you you just can't stand to hear it, to read about it, and it affects you in a, in a very negative way, physically, emotionally, whatever the case may be, you, you might want to skip this stream. I'm, I'm just being dead ass honest because there's some very disturbing stuff that's in this search warrant, but uh, we're going to go through it. We're going to talk about it. We're, we're in this Nick Ricada story. We got to cover it. We, we started this. We're going to continue this until it reach, reaches its conclusion, whatever that may be. Um, I don't know if anybody's going to hop in. I don't know how many people actually, how many of the gang actually want to go over this. Um, we'll see. We'll see. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put this out on X on Twitter. So here we go. Um, let me go ahead and put this out on Twitter so that people know what is happening, what is up. Because to me, this is, it's an important story. It's an important, it, it, it the thing is for me when it comes to this whole thing is, is this. If we're going to criticize people that we disagree with when they do something outrageous, we need to be willing to do the same to our side as well. We need to be willing to go after the people that we like or are associated with. And there comes a point where loyalty is tested and loyalty is broken. And whether you like Ricada's take or not, because I know I've, I've got a lot of people on the right who watch the channel as well. I've got people on the left, the right, the middle, whatever. I, I have a very diverse crowd. But whether you agree with Ricada or not, and especially if you agree with Ricada, if the man did something illegal, if he did something wrong, really wrong, you got to call him out for it. You can't have a double standard. I don't care if he was a... I don't care if he if he was a voice for whatever politics you have. It doesn't matter. If he's doing shady shit in his private life, why would you want him to be the voice of your movement? It's not a good look on you. That's not a good look on you. That's not a good look on your movement. That's not a good look on your principles. So we have to be willing to call people out. And if EVS is doing some shit like this, I call him out. If, if people that are on this stream or that I stream with were doing this shit, I would call them out. You have to. You have to be consistent. Consistency is key. What is up, Baki? How you doing? How you doing? Um, so I am going to go ahead and post this on Twitter. Uh, I should have done it a little bit earlier, but whatever. Um, streaming live now about the hashtag... Uh, I guess I should use at Ricada Law uh, search warrant for hashtag Nick Ricada. And that's not how you spell warrant, dumbass. All right. So there we go. So there we go. It's out on Twitter. There we go. They're trying to raise funds and signatures to release Ricada's body cam footage. Um, yeah, I think they should. I don't have an issue with that. Um, because I think it would put a lot of things to rest. I think it would. Um and a lot of the debate about what happened. Um, I think they should. I agree, Darsky. I agree. Go ahead, release it. 
because maybe I'm wrong. Like I'm open to being wrong, but after reading this warrant, after looking into it, I don't think I am, man. I don't think I am. I think what this guy did was horrible. I think he's a piece of shit. And I feel bad for those kids, man. I feel bad for those kids. But yeah, release the body cam footage. I'm fine with that. I'm cool with that. I'm absolutely cool with that. Go ahead. Release the body cam footage. I am 100% fine with that. Um, okay, so let's actually look. Let's start looking at this warrant. And um, we'll go over it. And we'll, we'll see if anybody else comes in. But it is... 11 pages, I believe. It starts off It starts off with the application for the search warrant. It starts out with the application for the search warrant. And I think I'm going to zoom in just a little bit. Um, okay, that should be good. That should be good. All right. So let's jump into this. I believe it's 11 pages. We're going to start with page, with page one. It starts out... Um, it starts out with the uh, with the application for the search warrant, um, and basically what it covers here is you know it's talking about uh, Ricada's his, his home, it's talking about his date of birth, you know the ba the basic stuff, the basic stuff. Um, so the application, of course, says I apply for a search warrant on the following grounds: the possession of the property or things above uh, described constitutes a crime. The property or the things above described constitutes evidence which tends to show a crime has been committed or tends to show that a particular person has committed a crime. And, um, of course, they're talking about Nick Ricada's house. They're talking about his home. Yo, what's up, Plunge? What's up? All right. So then we start getting into the... Um, then we start getting into the the, the details, the, the real meat of the warrant. I would say. Um, so, of course, it's talking about all the things that could be re related to things that they... This is just real general stuff. This real general stuff, it's not really um, all that important. But, you know, it's talking about things like, you know, criminal sexual conduct, homicide, death investigations, basically listing, like, any of all crimes that, you know, like, could, could be going on. Not that he did any of this stuff. Uh, not that he did. I mean, you know, I don't think we're jumping into full blown murder at this point, obviously, but you know, it's just like real basic stuff, real general stuff. Okay. So what we really need to get into here is the case background. And that starts at the bottom of page two. So the case background begins as such on May 16th, 2024, Candy Hoey? Can, can, that is a weird-ass name for a cat. I, I don't know how to pronounce that. Candy Yohi. Can, can Yohi County Sheriff's Office Sergeant Dave Nestor received a report regarding possible child neglect and controlled substance use. The reporter indicated that Nicholas Robert Ricada, um, and it goes over his date of birth, his address, all that stuff. He resides at this residence with his wife, Kayla, Christine Ricada, um, and five children ages 6 to 16. Um, the reporter indicated that four people from their church had gone to him reporting neglect to the children, possible controlled substance use, and a questionable relationship with an additional couple. So this person that made the report to the police... Um, I don't know if it's been confirmed, but what I have heard is, is that it was the pastor. It was the pastor at Nick's church. That was the reporting, uh, that, that was the one that reported this, uh, the, the, all of this, basically. That got the, the ball rolling on all of this. And to be fair, a any if you're anybody like a teacher or a doctor, a pastor, any kind of religious figure, um, anything like that, you are required by law to report suspicion of child neglect you are required by law you you have to do it you don't have any other choice if you fail to do it if you fail to do it um you can you can be held legally liable uh yeah it was his pastor and his kids told the pastor okay Ugh. see that makes it even worse that makes it even worse all right we continue with the uh with the warrant. It was reported that Nicholas is a social media blogger 
And he and his wife, Kayla, had befriended hosts from a different local social media blogger. Uh, those individuals were identified as Aaron Michael uh, Imholt M- and April Diane Imholt. Um, I do admit that my Nick Ricada lore is a little bit scratchy. It's a little bit rough because um, I, 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 I didn't know about the whole thing with April. Because I stopped watching Ricada a while ago. The last thing I saw of Ricada was his Eric July thing. Which I which is kind of ironic because you know in that video uh, Nick was telling Eric you know regarding the Lysum uh, the um, Lysum the Isom lawsuit he's basically saying hey shut up Eric shut up Eric you're screwing yourself here shut up that's what Nick needs to be doing now Nick needs to shut the hell up he needs to shut the hell up because uh, he's just digging the hole deeper that's what he's doing um you're Affiant knows personally these are personalities of the Steel Toe Morning Show, which used to be in St. Cloud, Minnesota radio. However, as of recent years, the show has been a social media entertainment show strictly online-based. It was reported that the Imholtz may have been staying with the Ricadas and the home was in disarray and cluttered. It was reported from a church preschool teacher that the children had complained. And we continue on to the next page. Of being hungry. So the children had complained to their Sunday school teacher of being hungry, not being fed, and wearing. This is where I'm going to really start getting fucking mad at this point. This is where I'm going to get mad at this point. Wearing the same clothes for three to four days at a time and would start to smell. These are the kids saying this. These are the kids complaining about this. We're going to call the kids liars now? Well, is that what we're going to do? We're going to call the kids liars? Really? Seriously? I don't get you people. I'm not talking about you, Chad. I'm not talking about you. Um, I'm talking about the ones that are out there defending Nick. I don't get you fuckers. Why? Because because you have this parasocial relationship with Nick Ricada? Because he promoted your brand, your business, and he made you money? Is that it? So that's what it is, huh? Your loyalty can be bought with the almighty dollar. It's not about principles. It's about profits. It's not about morality. It's about money. That's what it is with you people. That or you just, you know, Nick goes on there and he's he's your echo chamber. He's confirming your beliefs, your political ideas. And so because of that, you don't want his voice silenced. It doesn't matter if he did this this shit. It doesn't matter if he's guilty of child neglect. No, 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 no. He speaks for me. And that's all that matters. What does that say about you that you want somebody like this to continue to speak about you? What does it say about your movement? What does it say about your politics? Do you not realize that the very causes that you claim to promote, if you have someone like Nick Ricada as the voice of, of, of um, of your political movement, that you are just doing damage to that same movement? Do you not understand that? Do you not realize that? You are damaging your own movement. Let's continue because I'm like people were talking about Grumpy Jesker a couple of nights ago. Now you're gonna get you're you're gonna get Grumpy Jesker tonight. You're gonna get Grumpy Jesker tonight because this is sickening. All right, let's continue with the uh, with the warrant. Nicholas was reported to being lethargic and appeared high or drugged, driving a car around. <sighs> Did he have the kids in the car? What if he had what if he had hit somebody with the car? What if he had killed somebody? What if he had killed the kids?
again, I, I just don't know how this any of this is defensible. Continuing on, another individual advised the report. Uh, they reported that Nicholas will walk out randomly during sermons at church and have noticed behavioral changes in him. It was alleged that Kayla looks anorexic and Nicholas has lost a substantial amount of weight recently. One individual described Nicholas of having injection or track marks on his arms. The reporter reiterated concerns for possible neg ne neglect and or controlled substance use within the home. You cannot... You cannot be using drugs while your children are in the home. That That is child abuse. I don't know how you can look at it any other way. I don't know how you can look at it any other way. Both morally and legally, that's what it is. Let's continue. Your affiant started to review the Rakedas and the hip and the Imholt social media blogs. The blogs are commonly related to, <coughs> excuse me. The blogs are commonly related to legal issues and high profile trials, such as Nick, such high profile trials as Nicholas is a licensed attorney. Nicholas is known to drink alcoholic beverages excessively on these video blogs. I immediately noted that Nicholas's appearance in recent months had changed. In videos from January 2024 compared to May 2024, Nicholas appeared to have lost weight, appears tired, and overall appears strong out. Common with controlled substance users. Nicholas commonly refers to his studio as his basement in his own residence. Nicholas has been the victim of swatting phone calls and is known to your affiant and the Kendahoe County Sheriff's Office because of these calls. Uh, when the County Sheriff's Office responded to these calls, uh, they were at uh, Nick's address. While reviewing M. Holt's social media video blogs, Aaron recently indicated that he and April are getting a divorce. Aaron goes on to say that he has experimented with cocaine three times and Molly six or seven times in the past recently. On December 19th, 2023, the M. Holt's broadcasted a podcast from Mercatus Studio with the podcast being named Live from Spicer. Throughout M. Holt's video blogs, it is apparent that they and the Rakatas were friends and may have recently had a falling out. It should be noted that in recent videos of the M. Holt's, April has at times also appeared tired, lethargic, and strung out as well. In both Nicholas's and M. Holt's video blogs from Rakatas Studio, it is apparent that they are in the same room and the items in the background appear the same. At one point during the M. Holt, M. Holt's videos, uh, Nicholas walks in the background and grabs an item, which would show that the background is not a backdrop curtain and that it was the layout of the actual room. On May 22nd, 2024, M. Holt did a video blog where he talked about Nicholas and insinuated controlled substance use and also referenced a video blog that Nicholas put online uh, on May 21st, 2024. That had since been taken off the internet. The internet. I'm assuming that's the masturbation three, uh, stream. If I remember correctly, I, I believe the um, I believe the dates line up. That's the masturbation uh, stream. M. Holt indicates in this blog that Nicholas needs help and needs to get help for his kids because of his substance abuse. M. Holt points out a time in the video where Nicholas has a white powdery substance on his nose. Um. On May 22nd, 2024, your affiant was able to review the video that was taken off Nicholas's YouTube and Rumble social media sites. The video is from May 21st, 2024, and is of Nicholas in... We continue onwards. Zoom in. Nicholas in his basement studio talking about a court appeals ruling he lost. He appears in the video to be drinking alcoholic beverages and eventually appears under the influence of a substance or substances. The entire video blog is four hours and four minutes long. Approximately two minutes, 46 seconds into the video, Nicholas leaves to go to use the restroom when he returns at two hours. Wait a minute. Hold up, 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 hold up. Let me reread that again. Approx the entire video is four hours and four minutes long. Approximately two minutes and 46 seconds into the video, Nicholas leaves to go use the restroom. When he returns at two hours, 50 minutes and 40 seconds, 
He appears to be making an excited look and has a white powdery substance on his nose. This man was gone for almost three hours on a live stream. Really? Now that's some shit right there. Yes, Baki, this is getting darker and darker every day. Listen, I told people, I, t I told people, <sighs> I dealt with this with my own mother. And I told people, I said, look, I've seen this behavior before. I know what he's doing. I know where this leads to. And let me be clear. When I say I know, I don't mean that I can 100% say for sure I was there in the house. I watched it happen. Blah, 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 blah. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is I know the signs. I know the signs. And even though I wasn't there, thank God, even though I was not there, when you take the body of evidence, you can logically piece together what is going on and where this is going. Sometimes you have to do that because sometimes you're not going to have a definitive answer. Sometimes you're not going to have definitive proof. Sometimes you have to take the body of evidence and if the body of evidence is large enough and compelling enough, you can draw conclusions from that. And sometimes that's the best you can do. In a case like this, that is the best you can do. And if we go back to Nick's own videos, one of the videos he got big off of uh, was his live stream series covering the Johnny Depp trial. I wasn't there in Johnny Depp and Amber Heard's relationship. I can't tell you for sure what happened, but I can look at the body of evidence. And I can give you a reasonable conclusion based on that body of evidence, which is what the jury has to do. You have to, the standard of proof here is you have to be convinced beyond a reasonable doubt. And I think it's unreasonable to doubt that this shit was happening. That Nick Ricada was neglecting his kids. That he had gone off the fucking deep end. I think we're beyond reasonable doubt in that regards, in my opinion. And for people saying, oh, you got to wait, man. You got to wait till the trial. You got to wait till the verdict. Nick built his channel off of speculating and discussing legal cases. Are we not allowed to do the same now that it involves Nick Ricada himself? We can do the same. We can speculate. We have every right to speculate. That's hypocritical to suggest that we can't. The only reason that someone would say that is because they like Nick Ricada, they like what he says, and they're upset about this. Well, I'm sorry, but get out of your fucking feelings and look at the fucking evidence and the fucking facts. Try and be objective. Try to use logic and reasoning instead of your fucking emotions. And stop being a fucking hypocrite. Let's continue. Let's continue. Um, so he came back at two hours, 50 minutes, 40 seconds into the stream, and he had a white powdery substance on his nose. Gee, I wonder what that was. Your affiant believes his behavior is indicted, indicative of central nervous system stimulants. Your affiant believes based on training and experience as well as behavior of Nicholas that he ingested this white powdery substance through his nasal cavity while off camera. Your affiant knows through training and experience. Did you hear that? Through training and experience, which means they're an expert, that ingesting controlled substances through snorting, uh, or through, I'm sorry, through a nasal cavity is common amongst controlled substance users and is often referred to as snorting. Your affiant also noted that throughout the video, Nicholas is so under the influence of a substance to the point that he has to close one eye to read his screen, rambles, and slurs his speech. Nicholas would obviously not be able to care for his children in this state of intoxication. Let me repeat that. Nicholas 
would obviously not be able to care for his children in this state of intoxication. Why the fuck are people saying they want Nick to get his kids back? This is this is why I said in the previous streams, you cannot be an addict and be a good parent. Because when you are an addict, all you care about is your next fix. You have tunnel vision. You will put the well-being of your children second to your ability to get your, ne your next fix. When you are a parent, your children and their well-being is numero uno. If it's not, then you are not qualified to be a parent. And that is certainly true in the case of an addict. Their number one priority is their next mm -hmm. fix. So, when I hear people say that, oh, I hope he gets his kids back, I don't. Because he's not capable, in the state of mind that he's in, he's not capable of being a parent. And given the shit that he has put out, he has shown no remorse. He has shown no willingness to seek help. I'm sorry. Actually, no, I'm not sorry. What the fuck am I apologizing for? Nick should be apologizing. Those kids should not go back to Nick or to his wife. They are with the grandparents right now. And assuming that the grandparents are good people, and I'm assuming that they are, um, they should stay with the grandparents. Period. End of story. All right, let's continue. Let's continue. It should be uh, it should be noted that your affiant was a drug re recognition, drug recognition. Ele uh, ah, Jessica, get it together. It should be noted that your affiant was a drug recognition evaluator for several years, and based on your affiant's training and experience, the behavior of Nicholas in his video blog indicates poly, that means multiple, substance use, which means he was using most, multiple substances at the same time. Uh, yeah, that's basically what it goes on to say here, meaning it is believed he was ingesting more than one substance based on his behavior, being both excited and nearly passing out. This can be con the consistent behavior of using both CNS stimulants and depressants. Your affiant believes that the reports of neglect and controlled substance use are consistent with the previous mentioned information. Uh, your, aff your affiant is required to search Riketa's uh, address for the above listed items in relation to the welfare of the children in the home and in relation to a controlled substance investigation. Your affiant is also requesting to search Nick Rick Nicholas Riketa uh, himself. And then we continue on. We continue on. And I believe this is the, the last page of the application, if I'm not mistaken. I request a search warrant be issued commanding Quinn Poplin, Robbie Brenes, Nick Ardoff, Dave Nestor, Rob Tweed, Tweed, I don't know. Sorry if I mispronounced those names. Uh, peace officers of the state of Minnesota and any other authorized persons to enter and search between the hours of 7 a.m. and 8 p.m. To search the above described premises and persons for the described property and things and to seize and keep said property and things in custody until dealt with according to law, including authorization of the seized property and things be analyzed by a forensic laboratory. I, under penalty of perjury, that everything stated in this document is true and correct. Applicant Quinn Poplin. Uh a member of the sheriff's office. So that is the application for the search warrant. This is the actual search warrant. Let, <laughs> let's see how bad this gets, shall we? 
Let's see how bad this gets. So here's the actual search warrant. So it talks about how the um, it talks about how the uh, the search warrant was requested. Um, that that's the first part of this. Um, okay. So then we jump into it. And it says. Located in the city or township of New London, County of Kandahoy, I, I got to figure out how that's pronounced, state of Minnesota for the following described property and things. Um, controlled substances, including uh, methamphetamine, cocaine, or any other controlled substances prohibited by law and paraphernalia commonly associated with the sales slash uses of controlled substances. Items that would show controlled substance use that would not qualify as legal drug paraphernalia. Whereas the applicant of uh, Quinn Poplin was duly presented and read by the court and now fully advised uh, in the premises. Therefore, the court finds that probable cause exists for the insurance of a search warrant upon the following grounds. The possession of the property or the thing described above constitutes a crime. The property or things above described constitutes evidence which tends to show a crime has been committed or tends to show that a particular person has committed a crime. The court further finds that probable cause exists to believe that the above described property and things is or are at the above described premises and on the premises of Nicholas Robert Ricada. Date of birth, 12-16-1981. Now, therefore, you, Quinn Poplin, Robbie Burness, Nick Ardoff, Dave Nestor, Rob Tweet, peace officers of the state of Minnesota, and any other authorized persons are hereby commanded to enter and search between the hours of 7 a.m. and 8 p.m. to search the above, the, the above described premises and persons for the described property and things and to seize and keep said property and things in custody until dealt with according to law, including authorization of seized property and things to be analyzed by a forensic laboratory. In other words, they got fucking permission to perform the search so this is all legal it's legal now here is the receipt inventory and return and there is a list there is a list of the items uh the yeah yeah meth methamphetamine yes and there is a we're gonna look at it there is a list of the items that they found in Nick's house. This right here is about to get crazy. So let's jump into it. Here is the first part of the list. There's, th I believe there's three pages of stuff that they found. So here we go. And I do apologize. I do apologize for the, the, the writing here. I mean, I don't know who, who wrote this. It says pop Poplum. So I guess it was him. I guess it was him. But uh, the writing is really freaking bad. You can still make it out, but the writing is really freaking bad. So I do apologize for that. Um, but here is what was found. And there's three pages of this. So let, let's uh, let's jump into it. So this is the stuff that they found at Nick Ricada's home when they performed the search. Short tube... Uh, short tube... I believe that says cocaine, short tube of cocaine. Um, a white, a black and white substance. These were found at the nightstands in the master bedroom. Two credit cards belonging to April uh, Imholt. And if I'm not mistaken, I believe that they actually found traces of cocaine on the credit cards as well. Uh, two twenty-two spent something. I, I think those are the spent bullets. Again, the writing is fucking terrible, man. An AR plus magazines in the master bedroom. Um, looks like some kind of glass something or another. I don't know, man. Um, a bag with cards and cocaine. A uh, large, large cover. Something with with the with the white powder in the master bedroom. Uh, a baggie of something. 
how the fuck did they read this shit, man? Like you would think on a legal document they would have to they would have to write uh more elegantly. Jeez. A ziplog with white powder and baggies with, with something or another. All of this was found in the master bedroom, by the way. All right, so now we go on to the next list. It can again three pages of this, guys. Three pages. All right. This one's a little bit more readable. Um, you have a digital scale in the master ba master bathroom. Sorry, that says master bathroom. A metal pan with white powder in the master bathroom. Two something or another, two cutters in the master bathroom. $100 bill with white powdery residue, which that one is kind of... I, I, I believe it said that um, I believe it said that like most money has some trace of cocaine on it. So that, that one's kind of whatever. Failure says the only way problems like this will be solved is if we embrace social Darwinism. Um, I wouldn't go that far, but we need to do something with people like Ricada. Like they should be locked up in mental, mental institutions. And the thing is in America, we used to have mental hospitals and then Ronald Reagan shut all of them down. Um, and now those people are out on the streets homeless when they should be in mental hospitals getting help. That That's what should be happening. Somebody like Ricada belongs in a mental hospital. All right, let, let's continue. Uh, another bag with white substance, a white powdery substance. A scooper from the master closet. Two baggies in master bedroom safe. A baggie with a funnel. A Springfield AR. That's some kind of gun. Uh, a, a, some kind of handgun. Magazines with ammo. Let me ask you this. Was any of this shit locked up? Could the kids get access to the guns? I'm not saying you're not allowed to own guns. Like, I'm not going to say that. But you should keep them locked up and safe to where the kids can't get to them. And given the drugged out condition that Rakeda and his wife were in, I highly doubt they had them locked up and safe. Highly doubt it. Highly doubt it. All right, so then we get to the final page. And this is the final page of the warrant in general. We're on page 11. So this is the last page. This is the last page. So we get to the last page. Ammunition from the garage, a Remington shotgun, and a bullet from the master closet. According to Nick's DM leaks, the guns were locked up. Maybe they were. I don't know. It's just given the state of mind that he's in, can we trust anything that Nick said? I mean, that's the thing. Like, you, Having had to deal with addicts in my own family, you can't trust what they say ever. Ever. Ever, 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 ever. I mean, these people are crazy, man. Like my my oldest sister, um, she got arrested on a drug charge, and she was trying to say, you know, the ambulance was there testing her stuff. She tried to say, "Oh, I'm pregnant." Blah 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 blah. She wasn't fucking pregnant. She had her tubes tied years ago. She couldn't get pregnant. <laughs> They're fucking crazy. Like when someone is that drugged up. You cannot believe anything that they say. So I'm sorry, but no, Nick's anything that Nick says right now in his defense needs to be taken with a major grain of salt, a major grain of salt. Now, if, if this wasn't a drug related thing, if Nick was in his right mind, OK, but Nick is clearly not in his right mind. So how can we trust anything that he says? We can't. 
You can't. You you cannot trust anything that he says. Sorry, but you just can't. All right. So that is the warrant. That is the warrant that was released. And it it truly is more horrifying than than we ever imagined. I mean, it keeps getting worse. It keeps getting much, much worse. It's like Baki said. This is getting darker and darker every day. I mean, first we thought, when the news first broke, we thought that he got busted with LSD. And then, like eight hours later, we discover, well, actually it was uh, 25 grams of cocaine. And then we find out, well, it's actually more than just cocaine. It's 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 meth. It's it's all sorts of just really awful stuff, awful substances. And then here the warrant comes out, and we find out the condition that the kids were living in. The house was in disarray. They were wearing old clothes. They were not being bathed. They were not being cleaned. Um. Yeah, ketamine was found. Ketamine was found as well. Um, but the kids were not being taken care of. They were being neglected. They weren't being fed. And at this point, I don't know how you defend Nick. I don't know. I don't know how you do it. I don't know how you do it. The only reason you do it is because you like Nick. You like what he used to stand for. You like what he used to, you like the fact that he was a, a good mouthpiece for your political ideology. You don't care about the facts and the evidence. It's just all you're thinking is it doesn't matter what he did. All that matters is that he's my guy, he's on my team. And because of that, he could kill somebody and I would still defend his ass because he's my guy. Well, at that point, you don't have any real principles. You don't care about principles. You care about personalities, which given most, that's most of America on the right and the left. They care about personalities. They don't care about principles. That's why we have such a strong celebrity culture. It's because we care about personalities. We care about big names. It's why it's 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 why I tell people we're not a serious country. We're not a serious country. All we do is feel. We don't think. We don't use logic. We just feel. We do everything based on emotion. We're childish. We're a bunch of clowns. We're not a serious country. We've not been a serious country for a long, long time. <sighs> um, that's the warrant, though. That's the warrant. So I'm going to go to YouTube... And I'm going to look up Nick Ricada's channel. I'm going to look up Nick Ricada's channel. Fuck, the One Piece spoilers are out. I'm actually going to see if the One Piece chapter is out. If it is, I may go ahead and do the video for it. I'm not going to do a live stream because the live stream didn't really get as much attention as I wanted last week. Um... So I'll probably just go back to the video format for that. So here it is. This is... This is Nick Ricada's YouTube channel. I think what we know now, especially with the child neglect situation... Um, it's time for this channel to be taken down. And I don't say that lightly. 
I really don't say that lightly. Um, but I think it's time. I don't think you can have somebody doing this shit and YouTube continue to support them. <laughs> 